Hello, this is Malorian, and this is going to be a War Machine Battle Report. Now, what this is going to be is the second game of the month-long Steamroller. Now, for this week, though, things got messed up. What it's supposed to be is the mission is announced, your opponent is announced, and at some point over the week, you have to arrange when your game is going to be. And we actually had two games where they just could not work it out. There's, you know, one person or the other just was too busy, could not happen. So in this case... I'm going to be playing against another guy who just didn't get a game, but this won't count towards that. It'll still be the 42 points. We're using our, our lists and all that stuff, and uh, it should be kind of interesting. This is the store owner and his retribution. Uh, he's going to be using Kalissa, and he's he's getting pretty good at doing the caster kill. On my part, I'm going to be using my Saren list because I... I love the list, and this is going to be kind of an interesting matchup because Saren's very powerful and has some good things about killing off some infantry and stuff like this, but she doesn't like being shot, and there's a lot of shooting in this list. So we'll go over the list in a second, we'll go over the mission, but hey, if nothing else, it should be a lot of fun. Okay. Alright, so here's you know his main battle group and has Kalissa, the uh, Chimera, and also the Phoenix all looking good and ready to kill. And here's my main group here, and I have in my list here, of course, the the Scythian, two Carnivians, an Angelus, a Rick, a Harrier, and then Saren, and a little Shepherd there in the back. So really get in your face, go and kill stuff. I love Beastless and uh, you know. This one's also immune to combat for a turn, so that's always cool. So overall, the board looks like this. Uh, this mission here is the one where there's the big zone on the left, one on the right. Uh, you can't score until the second player's second turn, as usual. Uh, first one to five points wins, and you get one for controlling the zone, two for dominating. Now, I'm always a guy that looks for a scenario, and the Angelius is a very good thing to have for pushing things out. And so one of the things I'm really liking is that left zone there with that big building blocking movements and all this stuff. So I can kind of hide behind it and then fly over and kill stuff and blow stuff away. Uh, it, it's kind of interesting how the battle group is on the left. So really what I might try and do is just try and contest that left zone and really aim on controlling and dominating the right side of the zone but it's really going to be about good timing uh, and making sure that I hopefully don't get my caster shot out and killed but with my you know little force field and stuff that should help out so I get first turn and uh, basically everything's running up I felt kind of stupid after I did this because I could have put a bunch of spiky growth out but then I was reminded after that hey he ignores all my magical buffs anyway so it didn't really matter uh, also I put a lot of my stuff behind a wall on the right side which also didn't really matter um, looking at his stuff here I mean he has the one mage uh, assassin there in the center it's gonna have a, a possible charge of my Carnivian but you know what with such a long threat range I just have to kind of eat it so Really, I'm just going to take the hit there, counter, and then really focus on trying to kill whatever I can. Really looking forward to getting the Harrier into the middle of them and doing the little blight field thing to blow up a ton. But in his turn, he's mean to me and kills the Harrier. I don't know if he saw that coming or if it was just the easiest target to kill off right away. Uh, you can see his battle group is there going into the center. On the right side, his Stormfall archers do some shots into my Scythian. Or no, not this turn. No, this turn they just move up. But for the most part, he just kills the Harrier. He has uh, a couple of his spells up there, but nothing that's really uh, critical right now. So my turn two, this is going to be my feet turn. I have the Angelius go up and shoot the, uh, the Mage Assassin. Now, I don't know why he didn't charge. I think he was just waiting and... Uh, hoping to get a charge on my caster, but either way, it's dead. Uh, the Carnivian went up and sprayed. Uh, the other Carnivian went up and sprayed. The other one's uh, Scythian got into position. Uh, the Rayek went up, killed a couple of guys, then went up with Saren, did the 
uh, blight field and exploded a couple more guys. And really importantly, the rest of these little mage, you know, shooter guys, uh, they all failed their command test. So they won't be doing anything next turn. That's pretty awesome. And yeah, I popped my feet so he can't counter me. And he'll have to push pretty hard if he doesn't want me to control the, the zone here on the right. And here's just a little close up here, just how critical this was. And also, I'm also engaging here with the Rayek with three more models. So if he chose to run away, I would just get some free strikes. And uh, if he wants to shoot me, there'll be a big negative. So on his turn, there's not too much he can do, but he does actually some okay damage. Uh, Kalissa goes up and does some shots into my Angelius, does about a third of the damage. Now this really puts her in a dangerous spot. And uh, most of this is because he actually was thinking maybe he could actually take me down. But with a miss and some piss poor damage rolls, did not happen. So I have an opportunity there. Otherwise, I really expected his uh, halberdiers to rush into the zone. But once he passed his command test with the uh, little shooters there, the crossbowmen, uh, he then was already contesting, so he didn't really need to dedicate them. So they are pretty far back. They're ready to counter to whatever goes in the middle. Uh, the Stormfall archers do some massive damage to my Scythian on the right, doing about half damage to it. I was pretty impressed of how much they did. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. So now I, I had to really decide, am I going to go for scenario or if I want to go for assassination? And, you know, I'm more of a scenario guy, but it was getting late and I thought, Hey, let's go for this assassination. All right, but it failed horribly. So really what happened over here is that, first of all, Saren had to come over to be within range for, uh, you know, forcing and all that stuff. So that was kind of dedicating things right away. And once I did that, the ray came over and hopped over and went for a boosted headbutt on Kalissa. I missed. All right, whatever. Then from where the Carnivian was, I was able to tell from my measuring my control range that I was within aiming range to do my spray. So I aimed and I did my spray, boosted. I missed. <laughs> so the Angelius then charges in, boosts to hit, and misses. So just oh, all this stuff could have been so much damage so far, uh, especially if I would have headbutt, that would have gone through. All these would have auto hit. I buy one more attack. Luckily, that one hits, and it does some okay damage. But yeah, oh, this could have been it, but it was a big failure. So otherwise, it looks like this. The one Carnivian went up to kill a couple more of the crossbowmen. The Scythian really just ran to get in a blocking position, and the uh, Shepherd was up there just to take off some fury. But yeah, I'm definitely in a dangerous spot now. So after his turn, it looks like this. Uh, really how it went down is the Stormfall Archers went up and shot up my one Scythian, or sorry, the Carnivian. Uh, the Mage Hunter Assassins, I believe they're called, uh, they went and combined into my Scythian, did some little damage. Then the Halberdiers charged in. They killed both beasts. So that, that was scary already. And then stuff went kind of weird on the left. He charged in with Narn, did uh, some damage to Angelius, so that was pretty good for him. And then he tried killing me with Kalissa, but just could not get it done. So then the Chimera came back and tried to kill the Angelus, left it with one hit point. So what happened then is the Phoenix came back, and the Phoenix killed the Angelus with one hit, and then did a ton of damage to my Rayek with the rest of it. Like, I'm, I have, like three-quarter of my box is gone. So lots of damage there. I'm running really hot because I really was thinking I was going to be winning on the next turn. So I was sitting on five. Uh, luckily, some of my beasts died in a way that I don't have those fury issues. But really, if I don't get a caster kill here, I'm doomed. But luckily, it gets pretty easy because all I have to do is pull off the fury I can. The rig passes its uh, threshold test. I come over here, I do the blight field, boost the damage, and look at that triple six. So uh, I didn't really need it that high. She was already half dead anyway, but hey, that's a nice way to end the game. So there you go, a victory for Everblight and a victory for Saren. Well, wow, it, it was really close. Um, there's a couple of things to really note on this game here. First of all, 
Uh, definitely. I mean, I think if you would have done the, the numbers by average, that assassination could have worked. It was kind of risky for him going against the Angelus. It probably should have stayed out of the zone. But, you know, it was the same thing for him. He's kind of got like, all right, let's just see if we can make this happen. Because, of course, if he would have gotten that, he would have, you know, been able to dominate, get two points and all these things. So, you know, it was a kind of a risky move to make. It would have done more if he could have done more shooting, say, with with everything else on it, but really with that, he, he had himself kind of open, but hey, it paid off in the end. Now, after that, like I said, that could have gone that way, but another thing he could have really done is that when it came to his next turn there, he had three focus on each of his jacks, and I really was worried that he was going to be sending his jacks off to actually go and kill my caster. Now, he'd have a free strike from the Rayak, a free strike from the... Uh, and jealous, and I'd have a bunch of transfers. But the big thing is there is that once you got to me, I'd be, you know, in a lot of trouble. Especially once you charged in, uh, the Angelus was already maxed out. Like it's, even if I transfer things out, it's really going off and slaughtering my guys, right? So maybe you could have pulled something there, but I did have a lot of transfers. It was kind of a, a weird situation where, you know, even though the assassination failed, I still had these very threatening models all around the, the caster there, so you really had to get rid of them. Uh, one of the things that I really took from this that I never really thought of before, though, is actually the use of the, the, bl the Blightbringer to actually kill casters. I never really classified that as a caster killer before. It was always an infantry swarm killer, right? If there's something with high defense, send in the Harrier, do the Blightbringer, blow them all up. But, you know, casters, especially the high defense ones, don't have a lot of armor. It's an automatic POW-12. You boost that, it, it's a good way to go. I mean, it's it's a lot of focus, or fury, rather. It's going to be a five investment to make it happen. But, you know, like right here, I mean, that's all I need. I mean, 666 was crazy, but it was really all I needed. Now, one of the things that happened after the game is that when I started adding up all of his stuff, he's actually three points short. So I'm not sure whether he thought it was going to be a 40-point game as opposed to the 42 that the campaign was supposed to be, or I think in his campaign list, or rather the steamroller list, he actually has Iris in there. So that could have actually made a difference. Um, of course, I mean, Iris with me being able to have uh, my, the shooting that I do have and the, the Isla Sight, maybe I could have just sniped her anyway. But definitely that's something to keep in mind, that he was three points below uh, where I was. So that definitely was a factor. Either way, it was a fun game. Uh, crazy things kind of happening. And uh, feeling pretty lucky to come out of this one with the win. So thanks for watching. Bye.